Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create these calendars using your brother Scan and Cut. We're not going to actually print the calendars on your Scan and Cut. You're just going to be cutting them out so that all your rectangles are the same. Then I'll give you tips and tricks on how to decorate your calendars. For several years I've been making these for Christmas gifts and for craft fairs. This year I don't know if I'll be doing any craft fairs, but I I'm going to be giving out a lot of care packages and these are a great thing to include in it. So what I would like to do now before I show you how to print out a template for your calendar, I would like to just go back and show you some calendars I created over the years. So this is my 2021 version with the Dandy Garden Suite which will be available January 5th to my Stampin' Up! customers. And then last year I believe I used Follow Your Art. So I did, yeah, here it is, 2020. I couldn't actually find a picture. I had to go back to my Instagram account and find my picture. So I'm glad, I'm happy that I have social media so I can go back and find crafts to use as inspiration for my future crafts. So these three were decorated using the same calendar template we're going to be cutting out. And last year is when I discovered in 2020 how to create, or it was actually the end of 2019, how to create, how to cut these out with the scan and cut. Prior to that, I'll go back to 2018, when I was making these for the troops and sending them in care packages through Operation Shoebox, I was purchasing calendars on eBay and they were being sent to me and they took a very long time to come in the mail. And I thought to myself, like that I'm, they weren't very expensive, but I just thought to myself, why not just print them out as I need them. So this, these are just another version of the same exact calendar we're making. You can take a template and turn it. This is vertical orientation and you can make it horizontal orientation. Also in that same year, 2018, I created these mini calendars using the Miss and Magic suite by Stampin' Up. So you can just see that it's, it's very similar designs. I mean, with, with the different DS designer series paper, and it makes it a great gift for different people who like different kinds of things. Here's another masculine style. I gave this one to my husband, and he did put it on his desk and used it. And I made these little clips for inspiration saying, you're a fox and looking sharp. And finally, as you can see, I did a lot of things in 2018. That was when I was really heavy into craft fairs. These sell like hotcakes because they are something that's very useful. And I, I get asked all the time what I would charge for something like this. And I think they were $5, if I can recall. And this is using the Coffee Break Suite, which I very much miss. It's a retired product from Stampin' Up! And these little cups and embellishments were so easy to cut out with the Scan and Cut. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to create the calendar itself and print it out. And that's actually some instructions. I'll, gi I'll give a link to my instructions later so you can go through this. Okay, you're going to go to a website called timeanddate.com. I love this website. I use it all the time to try to figure out what time zones different people are in and when I can call people, when I can call offices and different things. So one thing that's nice about this site, so just go ahead and type in timeanddate.com you're going to go over to the calendar and you're going to go to full year and instead of 2020, just change it to 2021. Now what I really like is that you can create printable calendars. And because they do rely, as many websites do, on advertisements, I'm not going to give you a printable calendar. I'm going to just show you how to make one yourself. Then of course you're going to print it on your printer and that way you can go to the site as well and you can hopefully see advertisements that are relevant to you which helps support these different websites that give out things for free. So this is, says it go over here full calendar 2021 and you're going to go to printable PDF calendar. Printable PDF calendar. You don't have to give it a title because we, we're not going to just change it to country. Let's see. United States. Well, you don't, you don't have to change it to United States. Change it to whatever country you were in. And as you can see, it just went back to 2020 
we're going to go back to 2021, even though I just got done putting 2021. So now you're looking at it and you're like, well, that's a lot of extra stuff on this calendar on the right side. And that is true. We want to make sure that we uncheck all of these things. So if you could, if you could see that it, the different dates are circled for holidays, and that's great. If you want a calendar like that, this is a very useful site. So you can go ahead and print out calendars like that. But for our intents and purposes, just reviewing, let me go back. We want a calendar that's plain, nothing circled on it. You, if you want something circled on it, by all means, that's fine too. But I want one that's plain because I like to circle my own dates, like the dates I have to go to work or the dates someone's birthday. So I like to have plain calendars. So let's go back to the time and date. So here we are, and we're going to go to the, where it says holidays and observances. Just uncheck everything. Uncheck national holidays and watch it update over on the right. Uncheck more observances. Uncheck mark non-working days and moon phases. Uncheck uncheck everything. Okay, you don't want any of these extra things. You just want a plain calendar. Now I found that it was easier to use the scan and cut to cut out the calendars when they were in the portrait orientation. That worked for me. And I'm going to show you my template. So first of all, I want to go and make it January is my first month. So we're going to go over here to 2021 and make January my first month. And it's going to be for one year, so we want 12 months, which is fine. That's great. And I want the portrait orientation. So we're going to go down here. And of course, if you're in another country, you would you would change yours to, you would might keep it on A4. I want to keep it on letter. And I'm going to go portrait orientation. You don't have to keep print it in color because it's just black and white, but it won't hurt to leave it in color. So let's just say letter black and white and portrait if you're in the US. But if you're in another country, of course, you would use A4. Then my template might be a little different for you. The template I'm going to teach you how to make with the scan and cut. But as I always say, everything I show you can be applied to whichever software, whichever size paper you have, whichever materials you have to make your calendar. Because the skills I'm teaching you can be applied. And you might have to change the sizes, but you can apply what you're learning. We're all done. I just want to show you now what it looks like. This is the calendar that we're printing out. So the idea is that we're going to use the scan and cut to, to cut these out in perfect rectangles so that all the calendar, all of the months of the calendar are the same size. Once again, when we stack them up in a project like this, we don't want them to be jagged edged and not the same size and trying to do it with a paper trimmer would be an absolute nightmare. We want them. To, we want to use the scan and cut to cut out all the months. Furthermore, we can use the scan and cut to cut out this here year, the 2021, using a circle shape. So back to the printable. Here we are, calendar. We're ready to go, and you're going to download the PDF calendar. And then you're going to use your printer. And you may be wondering, can I print this on paper? Can I print it on cardstock? Whichever you want to do. If you print it on cardstock, then your calendars are going to be pretty thick. This was printed on plain paper. And I do have one printed in cardstock I can show you. It just makes the calendar really thick. And then I couldn't fit it in my little clips. But I do have other styles where I use bigger clips. I think it was the true gentleman one. You can use bigger binder clips instead of my mini binder clips. Or, or you can use whatever you want, paper clips to hold it together. I used a binder clip here. So if you do decide to use cardstock, just keep in mind that you're going to have really thick piles of paper, 12 sheets in your calendar, and it's going to be pretty thick and hard to clip, but that's no problem. Your scan and cut's going to cut out plain paper or, or cardstock. So I'm going to open up my PDF to show you what it looks like. So there it is. I'm in Adobe and I'm, I'm just going to print this out using my printer. And sometimes if you print with thick cardstock, like if you're going to put Whisper White into your printer, you may have to tell your printer that you have thicker paper in one of your settings. But if you print it on plain paper, then you're, you don't have to do anything. You just press print and you're ready to go. So next I'm going to see you over at the scan and cut. I'm going to be using the SDX for this particular project. And I will see you over there and you can work with whichever model of scan and cut you have and I'll be showing you which settings to use. Thank you. 
In this section of the tutorial, I will show you how to cut out your calendars. Now, I just want to clarify, the Brother Scan and Cut is not a printer. I get asked this all the time. People want to print wedding invitations and all kinds of things. That's you can draw, but you cannot actually print. If you you would not you would not actually make this on your Scan and Cut. You wouldn't draw this. You would you have to print this in a printer. So I just wanted to clarify that and then show you this screen again and show you why you can see something that looks like it may have come from the scan and cut. This is what's called background scanning. So we are going to, the big, the overall concept is, after I do the layout where I show you how to make the rectangles to cut this calendar, we are going to scan in our calendar from that's on the mat. Because remember we talked about you might be in a different country and your paper might be a little different size. Maybe you didn't put the paper on the exact same spot. I put it on, on the mat. You need to scan in your calendar and make sure that the rectangles I teach you how to make line up on your calendar. Okay, and so I just want to go back and just, I'm just going to turn off all the settings. So I'm going to turn off the background for a moment. I'm going to make everything go back to its default, including that, so that so that now when I start at the beginning, you, you can see what I see. All right, so, and, and also I'm going to teach you how to save the template. So this is this is really packed with tips and tricks, this whole section. So we've cut, we've printed out our calendars. You have lots of them. You're going to either a craft fair, you're making lots of people gifts for the holidays, care packages. So I made some in regular paper, which I'm going to cut out now. And I did cut out one in cardstock to show you that, see, when you use whisper weight cardstock, you just get such a crisper look to your calendar. And, but it's just going to be thicker and harder to handle with the little clips, but that's fine too. But the scan and cut will cut out either one. And if, if you're using auto blade, then, then it even knows what what to use, what depth. But I'll, I'll give you some tips and tricks for cutting this out without auto blade. So what I'm doing now is I'm just putting this on my mat. That's all I'm doing. Putting the calendar on my mat. And I'm not even putting it too close to the edge. I'm, I'm just kind of putting it here. Let me show you that. Okay, my, see, I'm not, I'm not putting it too close to the edge because when I make a little circle to cut out the year, I don't want, I don't want to get too close to the top of the mat. And also, I didn't want to get too close to the side. It really doesn't matter where you put this because we're going to use background scan to line it up. All right, so back to, it's easier for me to move my scan and cut than it is for me to use, move my actual camera. All right, so we start out with this. We turn on your machine, you see pattern and scan. And in this particular case, we want to go, we want to go here to the settings before we go to pattern. We're going to go to the settings and we want to change our cutting area, okay? Because we have a piece of paper that's like an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So we need to change our cutting area. So maybe about nine inches wide is fine. Nine inches wide. You see, it can be 8.82 .8 is fine. You just, the, the paper's eight and a half inches across. So we wanna make it so, and you can make it 10 and a half inches down is fine. Okay, or 11. What you don't wanna do is leave it 12 by 12 because then when you create your rectangles, it's gonna try to align your rectangles all across the page. So you need to tell it you have a cutting area of wherever you're putting this. So in this case, I'm putting it on the left side of my mat. So change your cutting area to either eight and a half by 11, the exact size of your paper, but I recommend to make it even a little bigger or just, or, you know, a little, maybe, maybe nine by a little over 11, but don't make it quite 12 and don't make it go too far across. In fact, I'll just put, in fact, I do have instructions and I will be giving you the, the list of where my handout is. So I do, I will explain. I wrote 10 by nine, but I know I needed to go more than 10. So we're just gonna say 10 and a half. We're gonna say 10 and a half by nine in my instructions. All right, so now we have a cutting area set. So now when you do what's called, lay, when you do your layout of your rectangles, they're gonna go into that cutting area. Now the pattern interval is the space between shapes. A small pattern interval, this, we're using a pattern interval of two. Be, a, a small pattern interval has a smaller distance between each shape. So this is my rectangles. And if I don't put it at least a pattern interval of two, the rectangles will be too close together and they didn't come out in my template. So use a pattern interval of two. Again, it'll be in the handout. And this is actually, this lesson I'm teaching is in one of the courses I teach on Udemy. I put this in my course last year. I believe it was the Brother Scan and Cut course on the SDX 125. But I wanted to do a whole lesson again this year because I'm making more calendars. All right, so that's it. We've changed the cutting area. We've changed the pattern interval. Pretty sure that's all we have to change. Now we're going to go in and we're going to go to pattern. We're going to we're going to make rectangles. 
You can either start with a rectangle or just start with a square, it doesn't matter. If you do start with a square, make sure you check this box, which is letting you change the width and the height independently of each other. Okay, so I actually have to refer to my own, <laughs> to my own notes because sometimes there's a lot of details. Here we go. So what we need is 2.2, the, the height is 2.15. And one of the reasons I even decided to make this tutorial again is because I needed it for myself. Each year I find myself scrambling to make the same projects over and over. And I like to have my, my own tutorials to refer to, to myself from year to year. So I am glad this is going to be on YouTube. And, and on my blog so I can refer to it next year when I go to make these calendars again and this template and hopefully the time and date website will still be in business because we are all clicking on we are all using it hopefully clicking on advertisements once in a while supporting those sites keeping the sites running that are free for us all right so there we go that's the that's what you want 2.15 by 2.55 and you want 12 of them because we have 12 months in the year right you want 12 12 rectangles don't add them later, add them now, because the reason we want to add them now is we've set the pattern interval. They will now flow into the right spot. You'll watch the magic, see? Look at that. There's our, there's our rectangles we need for our calendar. Okay, let's, take a, let's go ahead and do our background scan I told you about. That's the background scan. And now we're going to align those rectangles to our calendar. And as, as long as you keep putting the paper into the, into the scan and cut in the same spot, you don't have to keep realigning them, but we, you know, we will do that. So I always like to group them as well. Okay. So before we start, so there's the, there's where we need to align and we need to align these over the months, but I like to do something. I like to go edit and I like to select all the rectangles and group them because we start trying to move them around on top of the months. They will not stay together. So now we've selected them all. So you see how I did that. Let me just go back. I don't, I think I might've done that a little quick. So here we are, we went to, edit. I was here, I went to edit, I selected all, this is select, selection, select all, that's the select all, and I wanna go is okay, and then in the object edit, there's a, this one's called group, it's a little circle and, and a triangle. So I wanna group these, and now look at this, I can move these around as a group. So check this out, we're gonna go okay, and we're gonna zoom in, we're gonna zoom in and check this out, we're gonna just take this whole 12 boxes, 12 rectangles, and move them onto our time and date calendar. This goes really fast, and I've already made, I don't know, three already, just right before this, so they actually goes really fast. And if you keep putting your paper in the same spot on the mat, you don't have to keep doing this. But there they are, they're aligned, and I like it, but just make sure the ones on the bottom are also aligned, because sometimes, yeah, I need a little more space on the top, I think, let's say. Yeah, there's a little bit more space on the bottom, so just, just nudge it. These are nudge keys. Those rectangles worked for all the months, but I did have to have a little bit more. Okay, I'm happy. Let's make sure the ones on the top are not too much space on top. Now, good. So now we have it. We've used our background scan. You learned how to use background scan. You've learned how to use cutting area. And now one more thing is just add that little circle. So click OK and click Add. We want a little circle, this pattern, right? Go get a circle for that year. We want to cut out just the year. That's if you want to know and it's 0.75 or three quarters of an inch. If you want to know what year the calendar is, because if you're giving these out a lot, and then you, maybe somebody doesn't use it right away, like what year was this? I mean, they should use it right away, right? It's a cute little gift, and my husband did use his, and other people told me they loved them and they used them, and I know I use them too, just to glance at when, when the dates are. So 0.75 circle, and you see that? There it is, and we need to put it over the year. But it's hard to see without going into edit, and zoom see it's hard to, it's hard to see so you have to zoom in and again you can use the nudge this is nudge oops I nudge too much you can use your stylus or you can nudge this is the reason you don't put the paper too close to the top of your mat because earlier when I did that my circle got a little cut off I'm happy I'm happy with my rectangles I'm happy with my circle and I'm say so, okay now before we go and cut this I want to teach you one more thing which is how to save your template. So this is our template, and we're gonna save it. And then you can reuse it over and over. Save it to our machine, 
Canvas workspace or a thumb drive, USB stick. I'm just gonna save it to my machine. And it says, it includes a group pattern. You can't ungroup it once you save it, but we don't wanna ungroup it. I like having the rectangles grouped so that they fall over the place in my calendar. If you did a different style calendar, you may have different size rectangles. But what I'm teaching you is a concept of changing your pattern area. Okay, you did this so that the, it doesn't try to put four rectangles across the mat. Okay, I taught you about how to group these. You're gonna group that no matter what size paper you have and how to add that circle if you wanna cut out the year. Okay, this is the background scan. It has a couple options, the background scan, and it has light and dark, but we wanted it to be dark. So let's just go ahead and do cut. And because we are using an auto blade, it will know what pressure to use. This is very sensitive though. On a CM350, I have to go back and look at my own settings on my own tutorials in the past, but it did rip the paper sometimes. And I had to lower the pressure and the blade depth. And But the Scan and Cut SDX did a great job cutting just plain paper. So I was happy with that. So I'm going to just come back in a minute when this is done. It's finished cutting and I'm going to show you how I would remove this from the mat. And, and I also just want to compare different size paper that I cut this out with. So let's just move the machine like that and you're going to pull off the paper. Okay. And I'm just going to, I would leave the mat loaded and just keep changing the paper and keep cutting out the different months. But I want to show you that this is very sensitive and it's, if you put the spatula under there without sort of getting it up there with your nail, you will rip the paper. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that. So you're gonna pull off the months and there you have the months. Okay, and same with the little year here. It's very sensitive, so, and you can actually cut another circle and of cardstock and back it up for support if you want, but that's how to get the months off. So now that we got the months off, I'm gonna show you how to assemble the calendar. Now let me just show you, this is a calendar printed in, in regular paper, and I just wanna show you the thickness. That's the 12 months. And now I want to show you the one that I cut out with Whisper White cardstock. This is just regular Whisper White cardstock. We also sell a Stampin' Up! thick Whisper White cardstock, but look at the difference. Okay, this is paper, Whisper White cardstock, and this is just 12 months. So when you go to put a binder clip on it, and I'm going to turn my camera at a different angle in just a moment, but I want to show you. So if you go put, these are little retired mini library clips, but you can use binder clips and paper clips and whatever you want to hold your calendar together. Actually, what I like to do is staple it first with a little mini stapler because that just holds it together and makes it easier and they can still rip it off, whoever you're giving it to. There. I like to put a little staple on it. But I couldn't get a staple to go through this one. It just, it just wouldn't go through. It's too thick. So, but what I wanted to show you is if you try to use these little binder clips on this such a big pile, it doesn't work. See? So you end up having to give someone the calendar you could say, here's some extra months, you know, use them later, right? I didn't want to do that. So I recommend, bottom line is this is why I recommend plain paper. So now, assembly. I'm going old school with the assembly. I'm not using the scan and cut because I think it's better to take, when you have, this is the calendar we're making, to, better to use a piece, a full piece of cardstock and you get more out of it, okay? This, by the way, this Dandy Garden products will be available January 5th. But in the meantime, you can still get some other things that you see, like that you might like some embellishments. And I'll show you, I'll tell you some of the products I used to make this. So let's start with, with this. I'm gonna use a Simply Scored. I'm, because I can get two calendars out of one eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, I'm not gonna use my scan and cut to make the calendar or the score lines. I'm just going old school and using a Simply Scored tool and a paper trimmer. All right, so we're gonna take we're going to turn our, our cardstock, the 8.5 and 11 by 11 sheet, we're going to turn it horizontally, and we are going to score at, let's take, there's two sides of your stylus, so 0.75, so each one of these is a quarter inch, well it's actually, each one's an eighth of an inch, so I'm going to go to the third sort of big one there, so when you score it, you can even hear a little noise as it breaks down the fibers in the paper. So 0.75, four inches, and again, this will all be in the handout. I'm giving you the handout that I give to my students in my class that I did this project with in, in my Udemy course, and I'm gonna change the picture up to the 2021. Okay, so you will get this handout. 
I even need the handout from year to year because I don't I don't make these all the time. Seven inch. You know, I came up with this project a few years ago and I only make it once a year. Okay, so 0 0.754 and 7. Okay, so we did our scoring first because that way when we cut it, we have two calendars made at once. Now we're going to turn it. We're going to turn it in the portrait orientation. And you're going to cut it in half. So this was an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. So we want four and a quarter. I no longer need my stylus, right? I don't need that. I'm just going to close this and cut it with my trimmer. Okay. So that's what you have. You get two out of one sheet. Let me just make a little bit of room here. And now I'm going to show you how to assemble it. I'm not showing you how to decorate it because the point of this tutorial was really for the scan and cut part. But I did recently show how to color these. I showed how to make a mask with the scan and cut. So I'll show you my embellishments and we'll do a little bit of embellishing. We'll just get started. I need to show you. So you take this. I need to show you how to assemble it. And you're going to fold this in like that. And now you have this little flap. And I'm going to use tear and tape. And the reason I use tear and tape is because you don't need, you don't, you not necessarily send it to somebody assembled. And tear and tape is perfect because they can take the other half of the tape off later. You can send it to somebody flat. And I came up with this when I had to send the, you know, a lot of these to people in the mail. And I came up with, well, this is better to use tear and tape because then you're not taking the adhesive off. You're just, I, I do two rows of it to be in reinforcement. So, right? So you don't need to take that off yet. That can be shipped flat. Okay, and then fold it inwards again. And fold it inwards again. Okay, inwards, inwards, inwards. Now don't adhere it, but that's how you would adhere it. That's how you adhere it. Okay, I just made a little stand. You can come up with your own design. This was just simple and I've been using it for years and it just seems to work. So for now, I'm just gonna use a little binder clip just to show you. I mean, I'm not gonna, actually you'd hear it off because we're gonna it might have to ship it flat but I'll put a little binder clip on there so it stands up okay and then I just want to tell you a couple more things I'm just just while I'm while I'm at it so you could do so you're gonna take your twine right and you're gonna put that in there and you're gonna make a little loop-de-loop -loop, and you can make a bow so you can tie your little knot right or a bow, and after you tie your knot, this is by the way Misty Moonlight Twine, and then you can hide your knot by tucking it, you can either make a bow and not hide it, or you can hide your knot by, you know, hiding it behind. That's what I did for this one. I hid it inside, I hid, I hid the bow. See, I just made the bow go like behind here. Okay, and if you wanna tape it so it doesn't it doesn't fall, then that's fine too. You can use tape. I did. I think I taped my little bow. Uh, not my bow, I just taped my little twine. Tape it in there so that it doesn't fall down. Okay, I'm just giving you assembling instruct, assembling tips. Okay, and then you had, and then of course, you need little designer series paper panels. And that's what you're gonna hang your calendar on. Okay, so I have my little calendar and my little binder clips. I have a couple little binder clips and you're just gonna hang your little calendar on it with a couple clips onto the twine and onto the calendar. Okay, so that's how you get your calendar to hang on there. Cuteness. And of course, you're going to have your DSP. And the DSP is from the Dandy Garden. And I just like this. This is Mossy Meadow cardstock, so I used DSP that is four, three inches by four inches. And you put a piece down there and a piece back up there, right? And then I had another little piece, and this was just scraps I used across and across there. Then I have the stamp from the Dandy Garden. Um, it's car I'm sorry, not the Dandy Garden is the name of the suite, but the Butterfly Garden is the name, or the Dragonfly Garden is the name of this, where I got those stamps from. Okay. I don't have all the products here with me, but I did make a lot of, I just showed you in, the, in a, a recent Scan and Cut tutorial how to make these stamping masks. And I used the stamping mask here. This is what my last tutorial was about. I did show you how to use this mask to color the dragonflies. And that was what we cut out with the scan and cut. We cut out mylar, so if you missed that tutorial. And I showed you how to do all kinds of things with them. And now I'm left with this fun bucket of embellishments. Bucket of crafty goodness. So here's a dragonfly that I've already put some Winkostella on and sponge colored it. And you would just stick them up on there with dimensionals. 
and that's how you decorate your calendar okay and then I did all these with the butterfly duet punch butterfly duet punch it's called and the butterfly gala stamp set and I have different sentiments and you can put that on there and that's how you decorate your calendars okay and then here's some other products I just showed you how to make in a recent scan and cut tutorial using that mask butterfly garden and then here's something I made since my tutorial I've made these bookmarks since my tutorial since my last tutorial which I showed you how to sponge color so this is all dragonfly garden this these are made from dragonfly garden and this is butterfly butterfly gala and the dragonfly punch and the butterfly duet punch and here's another example okay so now you have ways to decorate your calendar use whatever materials you have to decorate your little calendars with I hope this was inspirational to you I hope you'll make these for someone as a gift this holiday season thank you for watching this is the paper chef